our teeth are one of the strongest parts of our body. They are made from proteins such as collagen and minerals such as calcium. In addition to helping us chew through even the toughest foods, they also help us speak clearly. Most adults have 32 teeth, called permanent or secondary teeth. Eight incisors, four canines, also called cuspids, eight premolars, also called bicuspids, 12 molars, including four wisdom teeth, whereas children have 20 teeth. All eight of our incisor teeth are located in the front part of our mouth. We have four of them in our upper jaw and four in our lower jaw. They have sharp edges that help us bite into food. Whenever we sink our teeth into something, such as an apple, we use our incisor teeth. The very first teeth we grow are incisors, appearing when we are around six months old. Canines are four teeth which sit next to the incisors. We have two canines at the top of our mouth and two on the bottom. Canines have a sharp, pointy surface for tearing food. Canines are also called cuspids. Premolars are eight in number and sit next to your canines. There are four premolars on top and four on the bottom. Premolars are bigger than canines and incisors. They have a flat surface with ridges for crushing and grinding food into smaller pieces to make it easier to swallow. Baby molar teeth are replaced by adult premolars. Infants and young children do not have premolars because these teeth do not start to come in until around age 10. Molars are 12 in number and are our biggest and strongest teeth. We have six on the top and six on the bottom. The large surface area of your molars helps them grind up food. When you eat, your tongue pushes food to the back of your mouth. Then, your molars break up the food into pieces small enough for you to swallow. The molars include four wisdom teeth, which are the last set of teeth to come in. Wisdom teeth are also called third molars. They usually come in between the ages of 17 and 25. Not everyone has enough room in their mouth for this last group of teeth. Sometimes the wisdom teeth are impacted, meaning they are stuck under the gums. This means they do not have enough space to grow. If you do not have room for your wisdom teeth, you'll likely have to have them removed. Can you recall which type of teeth are the first ones we grow? What causes tooth decay? What is it that lives on our teeth, gums and tongue? Microbes. These microbes can be good or bad, and the bad ones can cause tooth decay. There are many types of bacteria that cause tooth decay. These can be Streptococcus mutans, Streptococcus cybrinus, and Lactobacillus. This is not at all exaggerated. As soon as we eat something, our bad, tiny microbes start to initiate a fierce battle in our mouth. The bacteria use every bit of leftover foods and drink that contain sugar or starch as ingredients to produce acids that can eat away the tooth's hardest surface. The enamel, the wound in the tooth that we've noticed as the dental cavity, and the surrounding devastating, sticky, transparent film of microbes as dental plaque. Battling the destruction the microbes has brought is the minerals in our saliva, consisting of mainly calcium and phosphate. Together with fluoride from the toothpaste, water, and other sources, the saliva remineralizes the damaged enamel after each acid attack. This battle of scraping minerals away and cementing it back to enamel is always happening at any time for as long as the person is alive. A constant acid attack, however, may overburden the ability of saliva to heal the tooth. This means that the frequent eating and drinking of sugar and starch that we all love arms the bacteria to defeat the good guy, saliva. The rate of recovery of the enamel will be outrun by the repeated cycles of acid damage done to it, hence causing it to lose minerals. An early sign of decay may show in the form of a white spot where the mineral is lacking. If action is taken at this point by supplying enough minerals and fluoride, the enamel can still repair itself and the decay can be stopped or even reversed. But if we keep consuming sugar and starch mindlessly, more minerals will be lost and the decay process will continue beyond repair. The enamel will be weakened and eventually destroyed, forming a dental cavity. To save the damaged tooth, we require the help of a dentist to fill the hole with materials such as composite resin. 
Tooth decays can be avoided by eating or drinking less sugar and starches. Frequent use of fluoride-containing mouthwashes, gels, toothpaste and tablets will also fortify the enamel. This is why it's important to brush our teeth twice a day. Our teeth condition may hold a significant first impression for the majority of people, if not all. You can be a TikTok celebrity, hoarding 29 million followers, showing everyone the 237 ways on how to do your makeup and shine your beauty. But if you're keeping the signature dark yellow color on your teeth, where some are even crooked, you can be sure to lose some potential beauty and cosmetic endorsement opportunities, at least the ones from dental products and hygiene solutions, before trying to make your teeth shinier versions of themselves so you can be up to the standard, let's find out the anatomy of your teeth, why it changes colors, and how to undo all the damage. Here is how the inside of our teeth looks. The enamel is the outermost layer and the hardest tissue in the body. The next layer is the dentin, which is slightly yellowish with a similar composition as bone. The last one is pulp, which supplies networks of blood vessels and nerves. Due to the translucent property of the enamel and the color of the dentine, the natural color of our teeth is actually not a perfect white, but rather yellowish. Several factors from our own bodies or from the outside change the color of the teeth. The chromogenic agents or coloring pigment from our foods and drinks, for example tannin from coffee and tea, are likely to be absorbed by the porous enamel. Acidic food can even cause damage to the enamel, allowing more of these substances to stain the teeth. Smoking also stains the teeth with two distinct colors. Tar produces dark stains, while nicotine is a colorless substance until it reacts with oxygen and becomes a yellowish stain. Tooth staining due to certain treatments such as antihistamines and antibiotic medicines, chemotherapy and radiography is not uncommon either. If your teeth have caries or have experienced trauma, it'll change its color due to the buildup of reparative or tertiary dentin, which is darker than the primary or secondary dentin. Another staining factor is when we grow old. The outer layer naturally gets thinner and exposes more of the dentin layer, resulting in a more yellowish tooth. Before proceeding, you may need to educate yourself and understand that the procedure does not work on all teeth conditions. It depends on the type of discoloration and damage of the teeth. Whitening will not work on teeth veneers, crowns or fillings either. Thus, the correct diagnosis is important to determine the appropriate treatment plan. The tooth whitening procedure differs based on the tooth conditions. The first one is the non-vital tooth procedure, used for a tooth that has received a root canal treatment, so it's essentially dead. The treatment itself darkens the pulp area. Restoring the tooth's color in this procedure requires the dentist to drill a hole, inject the whitening or bleaching agent, and seal the tooth temporarily. The majority of patients are expected to notice some progress in a few days, but the rest may take longer. After having the intended coloration, the bleaching agent is removed and the tooth is sealed off using composite material. Since the internal structures are still in good condition, the vital or living tooth procedure cannot use the whitening injection directly to the inside of the tooth. The dentist will apply a gel whitening solution instead and activate it with a specific light. The gel is removed after up to 60 minutes. In the upcoming episode, we'll go over the different bleaching solutions and techniques available for whitening the vital teeth. Be sure to subscribe. This is commonly happening in sports such as martial arts or riding hobbies like skateboarding and doing tricks 50 meters above the ground on a motocross. But it can also happen to an innocent kid who just runs out of balance and to the next kid who trips over the first kid. Knocked out teeth or teeth avulsion accounts for up to 16% of dental injuries and is the number one cause of a significant decrease in handsomeness and prettiness in society. Although it seems trivial, tooth avulsion is one of the most serious dental injuries that needs prompt treatment for the best chance of outcome. Avulsion of primary tooth. If the avulsed tooth is not a permanent one, do not replant it as it can disturb the eruption of a permanent tooth. Monitor the patient closely so the permanent tooth can grow smoothly. Missing a vulsed tooth. In cases where the tooth cannot be found anywhere, we need to make sure using an x-ray device that the tooth is not intruded or inserted into the alveolar bone. The missing tooth can be replaced by a dental implant. For the intruded tooth, if it is not re-erupting by itself, it may need orthodontic repositioning or even surgery. When the avulsed tooth can be found, after the accident, you have 30 to 60 minutes before the periodontal ligament, or PDL, becomes non-viable.
locate the tooth and pick it on its crown, the visible area when in mouth. If it's dirty, rinse it with a hypertonic solution, such as milk or saline solution. After that, the patient or another person around should attempt to put back the tooth in its socket immediately. The patient then bites on the gauze or a piece of cloth to keep it in place. If it is not possible at the time, maybe the patient is unconscious. Find a clean storage filled with saline solution or milk or saliva. When the patient or people around are not sure how to reinsert the tooth, the quickest option is to put the avulsed tooth inside the cheeks to preserve it with saliva. In each situation, bring the patient and the tooth to the emergency clinic and visit a dentist as soon as possible. In a good condition, without any concern of head trauma or complications in the patient, the dentist proceeds to check the patient's mouth and clean the area from debris. If a gingival laceration is present, after local, preferably non-vasoconstricting anesthesia is administered. A suture needs to be applied. Any fracture on the jawbone or alveolar bone is managed first. Then, the doctor places the tooth if it hasn't been, or verifies the replanted location and integrity using radiography. A flexible splint, such as wire or fishing line, is applied to adjacent teeth to stabilize the avulsed tooth while the tissue and bones are rounded heal. The splinting period can last more than two weeks. Painkillers, antibiotics, and anti-tetanus injections may be administered if needed. During the splinting period, the patient should eat soft food and avoid biting on the replanted tooth. The splinted tooth also cannot be brushed normally, and at the same time, the splint itself will collect more plaque and food debris. So, a mouth rinse is prescribed to prevent gingivitis or gum inflammation. After the splint is applied, an adult needs to have a root canal procedure in two weeks to remove the infected tissue and clean the canals. For immature permanent teeth in children, if the root is not formed yet, natural revascularization of the pulp space can still happen and lead to root development, but it needs to be monitored closely in case necrosis or inflammation appears, which necessitates the root canal treatment immediately. The long-term outcome of dental trauma depends on many factors of each individual, but the most important one is how long it took from the time of the avulsion to receiving treatment. If more than 60 minutes pass, even if replanted successfully, the prognosis of the tooth is not going to be good. The root on the gum can be resorbed, and the PDL on the tooth can experience necrosis. For any treatment received by the patient, regular visits to the dentist or endodontist are required. Prevention. Now, how to prevent tooth avulsion in the first place? While a fall on your face is accidental and difficult to account for, other activities that involve strong impact to the head, such as boxing, rugby or American football, should require the player to use mouth guards and a face mask. It also protects the area around the teeth, like the jawbone, gum, and temporomandibular joint. So, the next time you walk onto the field or in the ring, use one on your mouth to protect your handsomeness. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.